Queen, Elizabeth and Robbie. Hey. hey. Kim, thank you so much. Uh, it's wonderful to meet the three of you. So I'm here today in a bookstore in a small town called Plainville, Massachusetts. Marissa, where are you dialing in from? I am in Birmingham, uh, UK, the United Kingdom. Wow, very cool. Yeah. And how about you, Robbie and Elizabeth? We're at the Tonight Show in New York City. <laughs> We're all like this. We're all called that. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to get off topic right away. I'm dying to know what's in your rider, what needs to be in the green room. Just uh, one of these. <laughs> Prior a uh, Hattie Harmony wherever we go now. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So yeah. even though our bookstore is in a small town, hundreds of people are watching from home right now. This is a really special event for us, and it came together very quickly. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks for bringing a little bit of, of the UK and Hollywood to our evening here in our, our small town in Plainville. So I read Hattie Harmony this morning, and I have to say, this, this is a really special book. Uh, you pack so many good lessons into such a short book. And as soon as I was done, I literally, my instinct was to, to start taking notes because I think mm. that the lessons are really that important, not just for a kid, of course, but for a grown up. Uh, so in a moment, I'd love to ask you to read the book, but before you, before you do, uh, Robbie and Elizabeth, could you tell us a little bit about how this book came to be? Yeah. yeah. Well, we had already, we're huge fans of um, children's books and and um, how how they really are the first impressions that we have as people on storytelling, imagination, creativity. Um, and so we've been wanting to write a children's book and we got connected with Tamar, our publisher at Penguin. And um, she uh, mostly Robbie writes and I'm his editor and that's kind of how we, we work together. And um, she had suggested us trying to crack something in children's mental wellness and um and i so robbie and i challenged each other to write our own books and we shared those books with each other and mine was terrible and his was hattie harmony <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious well what was it like to actually hold the book in your hands for a first time because this is a first for both of you is that true yeah yeah and i mean it was amazing it's really unreal yeah. uh, experience to see it in the flesh and um, shelves of bookstores. It's it's a really indescribable feel. Yeah, we really care so much about like what a page feels like, what yeah. a color palette um, looks like. And Marissa totally transformed what we had created. I mean, the, the collaboration of what happens between us just putting some, giving something out there and what Marissa came back with Put, the, put these characters in this world's life in a way that we could never have dreamed of. I mean, in every single detail. Yeah. Is, like when you're saying going back to take notes, I want to go back and I want to like stare at every page <laughs> and just scan every <laughs> single cute detail that Marissa has put on every single page. Cause it's also very funny. And there's so many things for kids to look at on multiple reads. I mean, she did such a beautiful job. So oh, seeing it in person in that way also has been better than like seeing a digital copy on a computer. Yeah. <laughs> so Marissa, this is your third book, but what, what makes this yeah. one uh, special? Yeah, well, uh, the first time that I got the manuscript from y'all and our editor, Tamar, um, it just like hit me. Right. It hit me instantly because it was this book about this really important topic, like right, mental health, health awareness and like anxiety in children, which um, I know, like Lizzie and Robbie, you've been doing interviews about and talking about how like you had anxiety as a child. Well, I definitely had anxiety as a child, too. So it just like spoke to me immediately. But also, I love that Hattie, even though she's talking about these really important subjects, she's just really fun and she's like really confident and they're doing all these like really silly things which i think is important too because even fun silly children can deal with anxiety and so when i read it i i just immediately like the images popped into my head of, of what hattie would look like and be like and how much energy she would have and the emotion she would have so yeah it's just immediately special to me in that sense so we shouldn't like yeah that was great. so confusing for us yeah, when we yeah. you know, we <laughs> were like we don't get to 
hate her? Yeah, I hate her. <laughs> <laughs> because we're just collaborating all with everything, like every step of the way with Robbie um, and his experience with his band or the person who's mixing the music. Or and, Yeah, it's and always a conversation. Yeah. And, and for and, me, like literally all day long, it's just with yeah. lots of people. And so it's yeah. really funny to do something collaborative and not have the dialogue, but we understand why, like technically, yeah. that's how it's structured. Um, but we were just so excited. We're like, we really want to understand. Yeah, we want to like, yeah, be yeah, part yeah. of that process. We're so such much. a fan, and we're like, I want to be oh, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. I was wondering, Elizabeth. Uh, I'm being a little bit cheeky here, but I'm curious about th those feelings that you have as a kid uh, going to school on the on the first day. Do those feelings come back to you on the first day of a movie set, or is it, or are you totally cool with that? I mean, the first. I think first day of movie set, first day of school. I was very lucky. I went to the same school for 13 years. So to me, it was like something I waited all summer for. <laughs> like I really liked school. So I actually didn't have that much anxiety that had, that was connected to going to school. It was where I felt all my friends were. I got a place, all the things I like to play. And I, I really liked being in school, but being the first day of set to me is a terrifying experience. And I think when Marissa is talking about handing over um, her own work, there's that feeling of you're for the first time someone's seeing, you've been talking about doing something and now you're finally doing it and sharing it. And that's a very vulnerable place. And there's something that Robbie had said recently when we were talking about the book where he said vulnerability is also, um, is empowering. Like the moment that you can accept your being vulnerable, you can be empowered by it if you choose to. And so there is that, there's that handoff, I think when, when you are vulnerable, um, and when you come out the other side, it, it feels incredible. Um, I can tell you a detail and then like a mistake almost. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> one character I love drawing was um, Duncan Delmar because he's a dolphin. And I kind of had to think about, you know, like him being a dolphin, what a dolphin, how a dolphin wears a t-shirt. And like, <laughs> I wanted him to be in the wheelchair. So like, you know how he would sit in the wheelchair. I don't know if anyone noticed that his backpack actually is a fish tank and he has like a fish friend in there. Oh, I didn't even and... notice that. <laughs> <laughs> really yeah. cute. Oh, that, so cute. So that was uh that was really fun to draw and I was like no one that's amazing this. but there those little details keep me alive. Um I, a mistake I realized was yeah he he breathes in like he does the exercise the breathing exercises and my husband actually pointed this out he was like Dolphins breathe through their blowholes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so a question for Elizabeth is, is why do you think it's important to have this kind of vocabulary at an early age? Um, I think it's important because, well, I also think just being able as adults even to identify when we feel overwhelmed, what the source is, is so hard that if you can, if you can learn as a kid that, when like Robbie was saying, like if you feel sick to your stomach or if um, you're just start crying, you don't know why. Like if you just start to practice identifying the feelings, it that's the step one of like of being able to then manage anything. But I also think if kids can identify it in themselves, then they can have compassion if they see someone else struggling and maybe the, the other person, the other kid in their class doesn't know what they're dealing with but that maybe the kid who can't identify it for themselves in their mind, they can have compassion or empathy without realizing it just because it's something that they can identify. So I think that's kind of, that's something that we just hope is um, part of this experience with Hattie is being able to have a bit more compassion, empathy, even though those are, I don't even know. I, I'm, I'm really obsessed with children's development. That was a lot of science that I took in college. And um, I think they say that the reason why junior high becomes so, uh, difficult is because kids actually have the capacity, like the synapses changed where they have the capacity to put themselves in someone else's shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think though that kids are very um, intuitive creatures. And even if they don't know how to quite literally do that yet, they can still sense if someone else is having struggles. So I just hope that if you create the language, then, then there's just a more compassionate dialogue without even realizing it. Yeah, and I think that's something that books do very uniquely is to create this feeling of, of empathy, right? Is yeah. that we can step into somebody else's shoes by 
by living through their head in a way that even even movies can't always do that. So books yeah. are really special. So we yeah. have a few minutes left here, and we know you you have to get on uh, with your uh, lives here on the Tonight Show. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we got some questions. We got so many questions that our that our audience turned in, and we picked out a few. Uh, so apologies to anyone who we didn't get to, but you had so many good questions. But let's go. Let's start with the question uh, from Gabby. Uh, and, and Gabby says, with Robbie being a musician and Elizabeth being an actor, how do they relax their anxieties on the go while being busy? We do a lot of walking. So in the morning, we'll wake up and the first the first thing that we say to each other is, do you want to go for a walk? <laughs> and, uh, and we try to do that rain or shine. And that kind of sets our minds straight, and really kind of evens us out for the day. Mm -hmm. All right, good question, Gabby. And a question from Brianna Berrios. Uh, what specific traits have you included to the character Hattie Harmony that you find carrying within yourselves? I think this is a question also for Elizabeth and Robbie. Um, I think Hattie, I think Hattie is, um, well, I don't know. Robbie, maybe you should answer because you're really more of Hattie's like well, Spirit. the the question was the what, what 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 do you carry with yourself that Hattie what that Hattie's that Hattie is like how do you that, what what, what do you you carry within yourself of Hattie's uh, of, of Hattie's personality? Ooh, um... I I mean for you I think that you I mean it sounds like you've always identified with kids that seemed like they're having a a more difficult go yes the empathy yeah and it sounds like just the stories like yeah the sensitivity that hattie has and the empathy and the um, camaraderie that she creates um uh, is something that maybe lives within me so, i mean i think so yeah. you're a very sensitive and empathetic person the charm the sweetness <laughs> 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 Um, so Inbal Levy asks a question, and we have, by the way, we have uh, at least a hundred of our viewers today are from overseas, which is cool. Oh, that's um, so cool. How about, this one's for Marissa, if Hattie had a theme song, which song do you think it should be? That's going to really put you on the spot. <laughs> oh, I know immediately. Really? It's Robbie's theme song. <laughs> no joke. Uh, ever since that video came out, my husband and I have been singing it. We're like, Patty, Harmony, <laughs> all over the house. So um, we're really vying for it. I'm not just trying to get like brownie points. Like, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great song. <laughs> So Zoya Aryan says that mental health has become increasingly important due to the COVID-19 pandemic. How did this affect the book, the writing of the book? Do, were you thinking about that when you were writing this book? We weren't really thinking about it as something that would, we thought this would be out and all of the pandemic stuff would have been right behind us, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we were just kind of thinking more in the general um, scope of the the worries and the stresses that we all face as kids and just, you know, long before the pandemic. And I think the pandemic kind of um, exacerbated, 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 exacerbated yeah. <laughs> all the, all the worries. Um, Especially but, since they haven't been in school for, I mean, some of them haven't been in school for two years. So the first day of school, I can't even imagine how overwhelming that actually can be now. Yeah, I think the math is that if there was a kid who is a first grader, then there, if, if there's a kid who is a fourth grader, then their last normal school day was in the first grade, I think. Wow. Oh, that's wow. crazy. That's an yeah. insane statistic. Yeah. It might even be longer. I'm not sure. So th this is something I've, I've wondered about as well. Anna Kate Willis asks, why did you choose to write a children's book seeing as, as Robbie and Lizzie, she said Lizzie, uh, have fan bases that consist mostly of older kids or young adults? What made you decide to write a kid's book? Well, kind of what we were talking yeah. about earlier today, that, that that is this informative time. I mean, it's all, it's, it's like a, it's a, it's a gift to get to be a part of a child's um, earliest memories. Like, I think that's those formative brain 
developing years and you can put something really positive out in the world really, really early in yeah. that stage. Yeah. Yeah. And it was picture books were the first things that inspired us creatively. So it made sense to collaborate and start there. Mm -hmm. cool. We also feel like are obsessed with all of our friends' kids. Yeah, that's, and, that was yeah. our big inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> cousins and uh, friends' kids. Yeah. It was, yeah. It's having our friends' kids and family over to our house. It's um, endless it's material. Our fav it's like our favorite. We, I look forward to it every time we make a plan like that. It's that's so really fun. Cool. So we're down to our final three questions. Uh, so Sophia, who is a psychology student, asks, was it difficult to find the right terminology for kids while also talking about such an important topic? And did you ask an expert such as a psychologist or a psychiatrist to help you write this book? Um, we sure did. Well, not to help us write it. Oh, well, yeah. But because... just before, I mean, yes, I think that's very important to have a consultant before claiming that these are things that you should put out in the world. But we did, basically what happened was, is Robbie wrote anecdotal stories. Mm -hmm. um, where there is a, an, a problem and a solution. And I went in and, and put the language of what that would be, what, how, what, what, the, what, what, what is the profession, the more like psychological term for yeah. the solution that he naturally created based on storytelling. So it's actually less um, like scientific with, and was more driven by story the whole time. Um, and so there's a lot of research that went into uh, uh, that the tools, but also, um, yes, we did have a consultant look at everything and make sure that we were using the correct language, um, for kids. Cool. And so can we hope for more, uh, stories about Hattie Harmony? Yes. Definitely. On one definitely right one more. Year. And yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see more. Well, that, that is really awesome. And I wanted to say, Thank you so much. We we know that you're uh, used to reaching millions of people, and tonight you did a really special event for hundreds, and it is a really special event, and you no, support fine. an independent bookstore, so we really appreciate that. Um, it was really a pleasure to get to know all three of you, and I'm sure Kim Thank would you. like to show her face one more time and say goodbye from an unlikely story here in Plainville, Massachusetts. Yes, thank you, and we hope you can come visit us in person. Yeah, that would be love awesome. to. That would be so yeah. great. Thank you so much. This is this has been a really special event. Thank, Thank you, you for having you. Us. Thank you for having yeah. us. And it was so Thank fun you. to get to do this with Marissa, I have to say. Yeah, Marissa, thank you. Thank you. Same. <laughs> <laughs> I've thank spent you for the last me. I've spent the last couple of days talking to your fans, Robbie and Elizabeth, and they are honestly the sweetest, kindest, just <laughs> nicest people. It's really made my day talking to them. Oh, that's nice. Oh, great. That's that was a lot really of great. Idea. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care. And thanks, everyone, who tuned in tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Jeff. Thank you, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, thank you so much.